Grace Van Dien, who is one of the actresses in Stranger Things, just came out and explained why she's quitting Hollywood, or at least taking a break from Hollywood. And it's, it's one of the most dignified videos I've seen out, out of Hollywood in years. Turning down acting projects and deciding to stream more. But the fact of the matter is the last few projects I've worked on, I didn't have the best experiences. One of the last movies I did, one of the producers asked me to, like he hired a girl that was, he was sleeping with and then he had her ask me to have a threesome with them. So like, that's my boss. And so I don't really want to be pressured to have threesomes with my boss. And so I'm having a new job now, which is similar to my old job, but it's a little bit different. Good honor. Good honor. This is a reminder that integrity has a cost to it. There are going to be all sorts of temptations in life to give up your integrity, to trade your integrity for a little bit more fame or a little bit more money or whatever. A little more convenience, a little more ease. And she says no. And so she's giving up acting projects because she doesn't want to take a ride on the casting couch. Some people are saying, well, she shouldn't have to pay the cost of that integrity. This this dirtbag producer, he should be held accountable. Yeah, he should. Totally. He should. Would, Would that it were so simple. But that's not the way Hollywood works. Don't look at us conservatives. It's not the conservatives who run Hollywood, okay? That's that's not the way Hollywood works. That's not the way Hollywood has ever worked. There's risk of corruption in all industries, but especially show business, because the promise of fame is so tempting and so uh, precious to so many people, and because the, the commodity that you are selling in show business is yourself, is your body. So it's no surprise that (laughs) that commodity is traded in the back rooms, even as it's traded on camera as well. And she knew that. And so Grace Van Dien could try to restart the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement was always bogus. It was always just a a PR stunt. Not not the women who were complaining about the abuse, but all of the Hollywood dirtbag men said, oh, he for she, I'm with her, I'm, time's up, me too. They're all all the ones perpetrating it. And they had no intention of changing their behavior. It was all totally fake. And so instead of Grace Van Dien saying, I'm going to wait for reality to be different than it has always been in this dirty town, I'm just going to, I'm not going to do it. If that's the cost of being a big star in Hollywood, I'm not going to do it. I'll go do something else. Good honor. This is the consequence of a theme that we've been talking about for the past week, which is feminism and the sexual revolution. Feminism says women and men should be treated exactly the same. They're indiscernible. Woman needs a man like fish needs a bicycle. Well, consequence of that is men are not going to treat women with a special care. They're going to treat women the way they treat men with the same kind of roughness that they would treat men. And that's, that's no good because men and women really are different. The sexual revolution, as a consequence of feminism, says, oh, sex, it's, it can be totally casual, doesn't mean anything. And so sex is going to be traded as a casual thing in Hollywood. It's a direct consequence of this. And rather than try to change the whole world, Grace, Grace Van Dien says, I'm out. See ya. Good honor. Very, very impressive. I think it's irrefutable, though. All this sexual revolution stuff stemming from feminism has not succeeded at what it promised to do, which is make everybody happier. It has made everybody more miserable. I gave this talk in Buffalo on Thursday. A thousand people showed up, even though the room was relatively small. It was only about a 300-person room. It's probably 500 protesters. So even just the protesters wouldn't have been able to fit into the room. And it was a fairly modest speech on the history of feminism and uh, how it pertains to political correctness, wokeness, leftism, relatively dry speech. But people got so wound up about it. There was a debriefing at the Gender Institute of the University of Buffalo, debriefing by these professors and students to to work through the stress and anxiety caused by my campus lecture. This was a really emotional, so I'm going to go back a step and say it was an awful experience. 
Um, and that probably the worst part of it was the absolute glee that some of the audience took. Honestly, I have not seen such glee except maybe in, you know, Nazi like propaganda, you know, like it, it was really something. The long lines were engineered um, to create fear. So there wasn't like, that's not free and public discourse. That's a performance. Okay. So much there. First of all, the long lines were engineered to create fear. The, the long lines were a result of lots of people showing up to the event. <laughs> I didn't, they weren't engineered. There, there was a door to the event and people were allowed in until it, the room was filled. And when you are waiting to get into a show or a lecture or any public space, you wait in a line. It was the fear, the, the long lines of the fear. And, and, but if you did make it into the room, the worst part was the glee. People actually liked what this awful man said. And the only time I've seen glee like this was in Nazi propaganda. If your only reference point for glee is Nazi propaganda, something has gone seriously wrong in your life. <laughs> if you, if you can't, when you think of glee, you don't think of my child's birthday party, the, the look on my loved one's face as we watched the sunset. If, if you know, you, you, the only gleeful experience that you can think of is a Nazi propaganda movie. Your life does not have enough glee, okay? You need to go outside and touch grass and, I don't know, go watch a movie or something. You know, take a walk on the beach. Anything, anything. Get, get something in your life that is not totally misery-inducing. But unfortunately, these people live their lives in, in accordance with ideas that are not conducive to their flourishing. I mean, that was the whole point of the talk. I said that these ideas, such as feminism, promise to make you happy, and then every measure we have of it shows that they have not made you happy. They've made you more and more miserable. So if you, if you suffer at any point in your life, well, that's just life. Life has suffering to it, okay? And you're going to have bad days, and the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike, and that's just part of it. But if you are constantly miserable, if you never, ever feel glee, and someone else exhibiting happiness causes you pain, that's on you. Something, something is wrong in your mind. And you need to change your mind a little bit, or else you're going to continue living a very miserable life. It's Music Monday, baby. The rest of the show continues now. You don't want to miss it. Become a member right now if you're not already a member. Dailywire.com slash Knowles. Use code Knowles at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. <music> 